Okay. Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time to uh, meet with us today. My name is Hilary Molina, and I am the Alumni Relations Director at Fielding Graduate University. And it is such a pleasure to, uh, to do events like this. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more how we got started here. But I just wanted to let you know how we are running this webinar. This is a webinar, which means you get to sit back, relax, don't worry, your camera's not on. You don't have to worry about sound. Uh, we can see who you are in our uh, panelist area. And there is a chat function that we would like to encourage all of you to use. And the chat is at the very bottom of your screen. And go ahead and click on chat and let us know where you're, where you're at. Where do you live? And uh, maybe a couple of words about how you're feeling today and why you're here. We'd love to hear from you. I will be monitoring the chat. Um, this is also going to be the place that if you have questions during this time, please feel free to put it in chat. Um, I'll be taking care of that where, uh, while we're going through, and, and we want this to be as interactive as possible. So I think I went through all of the to-dos for our webinar. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is introduce why we're here today and how I met Jim. We had a project together this summer where he was a panelist at the summer session for Fielding Graduate University and had an instant connection with him. And once we finished this session, um, he and I kept in contact and uh, Dr. Katzenstein was a pleasure to get to know. And he said, I have this idea. I have these uh, photographs that I, I've won awards for and uh, really I'd like to have an art show. Can I do an art show for Fielding? And I thought, gosh, that's a great idea. How can we do that? And during these times of COVID and the pandemic, normally we'd have our uh, in-person session in Santa Barbara. And I would love to have done something like this. But since we're going virtual, we've had to do something different. We haven't done anything like this before. So let's do a virtual art show. Would you be willing to try this out with me? And he said, yes. So it's been a pleasure to, to get started and get to know him during this time. The fascinating part of this, though, is why he has this photo journey. How did this come about? And he started telling me his story, his fielding story. And I was absolutely fascinated by how he got to where he is today. And so this is just really an excellent opportunity to, uh, to know a fielding alum and his journey, what life can be like after fielding. So I know that all of you who are calling in today, see there's a lot of family and friends, it's great to have you join us. Um, but I would like to go ahead and pass the virtual mic over to Dr. Katzenstein and he is letting me call him Jim because we have become friends. So Jim, thank you so much for being here today. This is such a pleasure and I'm excited that we're getting to do this. And I'm gonna pass over the mic to you. I, um, I'm uh, thrilled to be here um, and a bit nervous. Um, so if I fumble, you'll understand. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit before we talk about photographs about uh, my fielding experience. How did I get here? Um, and then once I got here, what did I do? Um, and then how did I get to Africa? Um, so let's do the first one first. How did I get to fielding? Um, I got to fielding over a clash in values. Um, as many people, um, experience they, they, when they're young, they develop a value system based on the value system of their families. Um, and I had a value system that was based on my dad, who um, was a child of the Great Depression. Um, and so for him, uh, values were um, you have a job. Um, you have to keep the job. Um, if you can own a business of your own, that's better than a job, even if you don't make any money at it, because no one's going to tell you what to do. Um, it didn't work for me, and it didn't work for me for the longest time. 
Um, and it resulted in some pretty serious depression. Uh, at that point, a family therapist gave me a little slip of paper and on it, it had Fielding's phone number. And he said, I think you're ready for Fielding. And that's the first time I had ever heard of Fielding. Um, what Fielding did was to allow me a safe space to try things. So I could do whatever I wanted and no one was going to say, you can't do that. Uh, that, for those of you who are at Fielding, that's probably fairly common, but for me, it was uh, amazing. Um, so I, I, I ended up applying for Fielding and started the Fielding program, and I've got lots of stories uh, about that, which we don't have time for today. Um, but when I, when I began fielding, the fielding faculty pushed me to try new things. Um, and there were some really strange new things. Um, so Will McWinney forced me to try consulting in Tanzania. Um, and I had never been off the North American continent. So this was, it, Tanzania was new. Um, consulting in a developing country was definitely new. And uh, spending a week with Will McWinnie in the wilderness was also kind of cool. Um, uh, Valerie Benz dragged me off to Mizoram, India um, on a, a project with a whole bunch of fielding people. Um, and I learned about rural India. Um, I became active in the American Telemedicine Association. Uh, so I became an active member of the ATA. Um, and of, of course, the people in my life at the time kept saying things like, what are you doing in that organization? You're not a doctor. Um, and but nobody at Fielding says that. Um, so I ended up uh, starting um, a human factors special interest group in the American Telemedicine Association and introduced um, organizational behavior to, um, the, to American, uh, to telemedicine. So the combination of, of um, technology and human factors. Um, I, uh, Will McWinney and I started a 501c3 nonprofit to build healthcare capacity and educational capacity in developing countries in Africa and India. Um, I developed a collaborative consulting model which became the basis of my dissertation, uh, a new way of consulting in a developing country that didn't have the basis of consulting. Um, I also began a teaching career at California State University, Dominguez Hills. Um, I teach management. Um, I take, and I'll tell you a little bit more about this when we get to the photos, but I take students and faculty on uh, faculty-led study abroad trips um, to wild places, um, and it changes their lives. Um, I became a photography student. I enrolled as a um, um, uh, in, in an associate's degree at Orange Coast College, um, community college, they have a photography program, one of the best in the country. And I decided I wanted to learn about photography. So I signed on 
for that. Um, uh, when I got to Africa, starting the first time, I started in Tanzania. Um, and we, the first projects that we worked on um, were maternal and child health clinics. Uh, we call them safe motherhood clinics. So we started it in the back of a bar. Um, this guy was um, owned a bar, didn't use the bar in the morning. So we started a clinic in the morning for the people in the surrounding community and two nurses. Um, and every Thursday we had a, a, a clinic to do prenatal care, postnatal care, well baby visits, vaccinations, HIV tests. Um, um, uh, vitamins for kids um, and a bit of public health. Um, we started a radio program that broadcasts public health information across northern Tanzania for reaching 30 million people. And we, we did it by recruiting a doctor and a radio celebrity um, and it was a, a, a show, a, 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 we had made call-ins and all that kind of stuff. And we taught simple things like, a, we taught kids how to brush their teeth. Um, and you'll see later that dental health is not a big thing in developing countries. So we taught kids how to brush their teeth. Um, we taught kids to be careful when they buy condoms uh, because when they buy them from the guy on the corner, frequently they're not safe. Um, so big, heavy medical stuff, right? Um, but important. Um, we started a cytology program uh, to, uh, as the basis for cervical cancer screening. Um, in education, we uh, connected our, uh, my university with universities in Southern Africa um, and shared technology and, uh, and uh, uh, information content um, and pedagogy with faculty in um, in the rural areas of Africa. So that's kind of some of what I did. Um, and now I'd like to show you my photographs, I think. Well, I thank you so much. And I learn more from you every time that we chat. And I'm just fascinated at, at everything that you've done. And there's one story that you told me um, in one of our earlier meetings that just is coming to me right now is when someone gave you that slip of paper to contact Fielding, that story of you going and meeting, was it Will that you met for the first time? I love the visual of what you were wearing when you came to the door and then how you, do you mind telling that real quick before we get to the photos? Cause I just, sure. I love that. Um, I, I was, you have to remember that at that time I was an executive in, in a manufacturing company. So my uniform of the day was a three-piece suit. Um, and when I, the, the first thing you have to do or had to do then, I presume it's still the same now, um, you had to go visit a fielding faculty. So I put on my three-piece suit um, and I went up to see Will McWinney um, and I, I knocked on the door and I didn't knock on the door because the door was open. Um, I walked in, in my three-piece suit and there was Will McWinney in a pair of gray sweats 
and he had hair like uh, Albert Einstein's so with hair everywhere. Um, and I'm in there in my three piece suit and I uh, wasn't real sure what I was doing there. Um, and then he's, I sat in the chair and he sat on a big blue ball, one of those blue exercise balls. And we spent the next three hours talking about um, that there's a world out there and, um, and that I could be part of that. Um, so that was, that was the first time that I met anybody from fielding and anybody like Will McWhinney. Thank you for sharing that story. I just, I, I really enjoyed that the first time that I heard that. Okay, are we ready for the photo art show? Uh, I hope. Okay. Okay, I think we're in that one. Okay. I, I just briefly, um, when I do art shows, I always have an artist statement that tells you what you're about to look at. So here is my artist statement. When people from the West think of Africa, often visions of war, famine, di and disease come to mind as desperate refugees struggle to reach safety. I've been going to various parts of the continent for 20 years. And during that time, I have seen the humanity of Africa. People live ordinary lives and deal with great difficulties with extraordinary courage. Whether it's a boy trying to walk with rickets or a little girl who has lost her mother and father to AIDS, and goes to sleep with a ragged stuffed animal for comfort. A nurse vaccinating a child in a makeshift clinic in the back of a bar on a Thursday morning, or a traditional healer treating a child with malaria with tea from the bark of a tree because there is no other medication. This is a continent where people frequently have no electricity, no clean water, no health care no secondary or tertiary education, no toys, no mommies, and yet they persevere. They laugh, they sing, they dance, they tell stories, they write books, they raise their children, they go to work, and like all of us, overcome the barriers to a successful life. This photographic exhibit attempts to show the humanity of Africa in a series of photographs taken over a 20 year period following my graduation from fielding. My work has helped give the second half of my life meaning and I hope in this exhibition, you will see the humanity of the people who have become my friends. So this was the beginning, my first trip with Will McWinney to uh, Tanzania. And this is in the seaport immigration part of Zanzibar. Women in the mountains of Southern Ethiopia. This is in one of our safe motherhood clinics. And people often get amazed when they see this photograph because she doesn't look like a mother, but she is. This is a boy with rickets in the 20th century. Um, it's a, a disease that's caused by vitamin D deficiencies. Um, we, um, treated him a uh, long distance with my daughter, in, who is a pediatrician in Arizona, and, um, and the doctor in um, 
Tanzania and me. This is him a couple of years later. Healthy, strong, and definitely cocky. This is in Cameroon in a, in a rural clinic. Um, the baby is obviously sick and there is no doctor. Uh, but don't worry, the doctor will be back in three days. And so she sat there with her baby for three days waiting for the doctor to come. Then we had a quick question on the previous photo of the, the mother, um, someone asking if you might know how old, um, how old she was from the clinic. Uh, I'm sorry, how old? Yeah, I think it was the one before this. Before that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know exactly, but my guess would be 14. Mm -hmm. uh, women have children young and often as a survival strategy. So you, often, so you often see young women with babies. Then there was another comment about uh, the boy with the rickets and the change in his legs is remarkable. Um, yeah, it's um, things that we would never have a problem with in the West, we have a problem with in developing countries. So, I mean, how we, quote, cured this boy was by giving him vitamin tablet. Um, it's a vitamin D deficiency. So I, we, I went down to the pharmacy at the hospital and I got vitamin D tablets. And, and that's really all that he needed. It's, it's simple and yet it's not. Um, Okay, here's mental health in Cameroon. Um, they don't have mental health programs in Cameroon. Um, and um, so this is a traditional healer grinding plants into powder to treat mental illness. And the mental illness is uh, called cerebral malaria. It's malaria that settles in the brain. And this is what it looks like. Um, so these guys are in this hospital and they're getting treated with plants. Um, and the chains on their feet are to keep them from running away. Um, if they get better, they take the chains off. Um, and yeah, that's three people in a small cell. But it's not all like that. So this is the government, um, the Minister of Communications, and the guy on the wall is the president of Cameroon, and he's been there for 40 years. He's still there. He started this well-equipped, well-financed research center in the capital. Um, and I visited it. Um, this is a country where soap, gloves, and masks are in short supply at clinics outside of the capital.
So here's a delivery room in a government hospital in Ethiopia. Uh, you don't need a medical degree to look at that and say, I wouldn't deliver my dog. However, frequently this is all they got. We were there in an attempt to uh, make this better. And our big make it better was let's get together and clean. Um, notice the, the gloves, the boxes, there's no gloves. They're boxes, but no gloves. This is, um, I, I mentioned before, I take students on study abroad trips. So the three people on the left are my students. The one in the middle, uh, and we, we went on a two week trip to Tanzania. Um, the young man on the right, who's still a good friend of mine, um, is from Tanzania, but he was attending um, school at Dominguez Hills. So the three of them and, uh, and me and, um, and another faculty member went to Tanzania. She, the, the one in the, in the middle had no idea what she wanted to do when she graduated from college, not a clue. We sent her up country with a gynecologist to deliver healthcare. And while she was there, she experienced a newborn baby dying because the baby didn't have 75 cents worth of oxygen. The government was supposed to deliver it and somehow it didn't get there. The baby died. She came back and said, I'm never doing, I'm never experiencing that again. When she came home, she enrolled in a, a nursing program and is now a practicing nurse midwife. So trips to developing countries change your lives. And that was Edie's wedding. Um, this is Ethiopia. The young man in the middle is also one of my students that I took to Ethiopia. Um, the person on the, the obvious person on the right is a, a colleague, a professor at uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills. And you learn about the culture of a place when you shower together. So this is a hot springs in in rural Ethiopia. We got invited to a, an African wedding. Um, this was um, the two, two more of my students together with a colleague. And we were the honored guest at a rich man's um, daughter's wedding in Addis Ababa. It's an empty road between Addis and Shashamani in central Ethiopia. The roads connect villages and serve the same purpose that rivers in the United States in the 18th century served. So they connect the villages, but there's an awful lot of empty space. Here's my orphanage. Um, it's called the Nero Orphanage. Uh, they have 40 children. Um, and the lady who runs it um, holds it together with duct tape. Um, these are kids who have lost their parents in the last great pandemic, um, which was HIV, AIDS, and it devastated Africa. 
Um, maybe the way that Corona is, is devastating the US. Uh, so here they have great numbers of orphans. Um, and here's one of the orphans. There's a whole story that goes along with this that I don't have time to tell, but um, I love the first part. They knew I was coming, and so they did posters. Um, and she started with, there is no sweet without sweat. Um, and they called me grandpa. A lot of kids in Africa call me grandpa. Um, so she says, I promised my grandfather that I will study hard in order to gain success. I want your help because I'm in secondary school form four. I want to pass my exams and I need school fees, books about science, bags and shoes. I'd like to be a doctor. There is no sweet without sweat. Children in an orphanage, when you have no parents, you take comfort wherever you can find it. It's a little girl with no parents asleep on a um, kind of a crummy mattress uh, with a fuzzy stuffed animal for comfort. Flash forward a little bit. These are the people battling coronavirus in Cameroon, doing the laundry by hand. A subsistence farmer living in a mud house, um, surviving. Uh, it's hot, they have no shoes, the road is all uphill. Children frequently don't go to school. Uh, they're needed in the family to take care of the chores. This is an African mom who sent her child to study at US college in Shashamani, Ethiopia. And now she's come to see him graduate. I had a, a German nurse that I met who shook her finger in my face and said, Jimmy, you will never get anything done in this country unless you learn what it means to be poor. Uh, this is what it means to be poor. The lovely lady selling onions in an open air market. I took her picture. She got upset until I bought one of her onions. Children in a remote village. This is a construction crew that was building a bottled water factory with their bare hands. It's a graduation ceremony at US College. I gave the keynote address. So one of the more, one of the most joyful events I've ever been at, singing, dancing, cheering, it was wonderful.
one of the things I tried to do is to connect universities um, in Africa with real needs um, and uh, that we could provide from the US. So uh, this is the vice chancellor of Hubert Kairuki Memorial University in Dar es Salaam. It's the largest privately owned medical school in the country. Uh, this is the vice chancellor um, and he came to the US at our invitation to sign a, an MOU with uh, Dominguez Hills. Uh, here's another MOU with the president of um, a, a college called University of the Mountains in Bangante, Cameroon, also a medical school, signing an MOU with the president of CSUDH. And this is a colleague of, uh, of mine at Dominguez Hills in a meeting with the faculty at US College to talk about introducing uh, education technology to the school. Things like Blackboard and uh, distance learning. Um, this is a school. Um, students learn to write with their fingers in the dirt because they don't have pencils and they don't have um, <coughs> um, paper and that kind of stuff. It's a fisherman in a homemade boat. Those are two logs, to, whoops. Those are two logs tied together and the fisherman is out on the lake attempting to catch dinner. Uh, wildlife. I, this is a grandmother that I met in uh, outside of Dar es Salaam. We sat on um, we sat on a stone floor and talked about our grandchildren. This is an old woman up in the mountains in Ethiopia. It's an African water hole. It's a community well where people from town get water. They fill containers, put them on the backs of donkeys and take them home. Sometimes if they don't have donkeys, it's on their backs. Every time I help one child like this, I feel like I'm saving the world. See a young girl in an alley in Old Town Zanzibar. And a little girl in a waiting room in a hospital waiting for her mommy to come out. Giraffes at Ngorogoro Crater. Elephants. These kids were in rural Tanzania and not used to seeing Westerners with a camera. So 
what you're looking at is what in the heck is that? Um, I think that when I show this to my students, I want them to, to remember is there ain't no shoes and there ain't enough nutritious food. It's a child waiting for a vaccination in one of our maternal and child health clinics. Confirmation morning. Her name is Evelyn. This is laundry day at the river. And this is taking a bath in a creek by the side of the road. These are three wise men. They're village elders in Ethiopia, three of them. One, two, if I ever grew a beard, that's the kind of beard I'd like to have. Uh, they were there to bless the graduates at the graduation in Ethiopia. And this is a housekeeper. Um, she lives where she works and makes about $20 a month. And that's her career. Uh, this is Chinese and Ethiopian governments converting farmland into this. Rush hour in rural Ethiopia. The major forms of transportation are tuk-tuks, which are the three-wheel vehicles in the lower right, and donkey carts. And it does seem like it's come out of the Wild West. It's a high school student in a city in central Ethiopia. And this is homeless living on the street. Common problem worldwide. Uh, the little boy is saying with his eyes, don't mess with my mom. This is in Cameroon. I met these two in an alley in Northern Cameroon. A boy with a yellow bucket on its head. Sunrise over the African jungle. Those are the tops of the trees down there. A walk before breakfast. This is another one of my students and our guide. Onions and tomatoes for sale on a road in rural Ethiopia. As I mentioned before, dental health is not a priority. And yes, she was flirting. This 
this is a um, a teacher in, at the College of Health Sciences in um, California, teaching a class um, in uh, Cameroon. Days end on the African savanna. And farewell till next time. Thank you so much for watching. June, thank you so much. I always enjoy uh, seeing your photos. So uh, I have a couple of questions here, if you don't mind. Uh, since since uh, since the pandemic is limiting your travel, um, now I understand that you would probably either have traveled already or would have had a trip coming up. So what are you, what are you doing now to keep in contact with, with your friends? Um, uh, we, we keep in contact using something called WhatsApp. Um, so we, when I first, 20 years ago, communication was nigh on impossible. It's better. It's not perfect, but it's better. So we're able to to talk to each other by phone using WhatsApp, um, and we can also use Zoom. So the communication, the telecommunication, is better, and that's how we communicate so far. Um, I. Um, I get involved in projects that my friends would like me to get involved in. Um, and, um, but yeah, we've got some things that I'd like to do that really can't be done without going there. So I'm just waiting and it is driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine. Uh, we have a question in the chat uh, box from uh, Michael Rosen. Uh, comment here, spectacular photos, Jim. And the question here is, looking at the extreme inequity between the wealthy governing class, what am I seeing? Uh, an awareness, indifference, lack of resources? Um, all of the above. Um, the, and I, I want to be a little careful about how I say this, um, but poor people are poor, um, and they don't have a lot of the basic things, which makes it easier for me to do something. When people go to Africa or to any developing country and they say um, I would like to uh, end poverty um, that's nice but you can't um, well then uh, if I can't end poverty I'm not rich what can I do and what I what I like to tell them is this kind of work is what you can do. All it takes is your time and a little bit of your money and you can make a difference on the ground because if, if a little child is in an orphanage and doesn't have any food, you can bring them food. Are you going to cure hunger? No, but you are going to give that kid a meal, and that's meaningful. Um, when you look at what the government does, you're, the government does not have a lot of resources themselves to start with. And the resources that they have 
they typically can't get uh, where it's needed. So that, that um, uh, research center in Yaoundé is nice and they do good research and they do good work, but five miles outside of Yaoundé, there's nothing. There is those, those poor clinics that I showed you with the no gloves. And you can't, they, they have not been able to bridge the gap. Did, did that answer your question? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, it, and, and while you were, while you were talking, it made me very curious uh, about your time at fielding before you went with Will McKinney to Africa or before you traveled with Valerie Benz. What happened for you personally where you were able to open up to the idea of doing something completely different from what you were doing prior? Because going from the corporate executive sector to what you're doing now, I'm curious if you if you could talk a little bit about personally what what how that change happened for you. The 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 fielding faculty were marvelous in that respect because on some level they understood that when you're looking for something else to do and you don't have a frame of reference in which to look at it then you're looking into, into an abyss. Um, so it's, you know, how, how it, it, your question is, is really relevant because I've never been off the North American continent. How do I know what I want to do there? So fielding pushed me to go get my feet wet and then the rest happened normally. So I'm at, I'm at a research session, um, a fielding research session, and um, Will McWinney is going to Tanzania. And he said, I'm going to Tanzania and you're going with me. And I said, how am I supposed to do that? And he said, that's not my problem, that's your problem. You're going with me. And I'm, I did. So if fielding provides, that's what I meant when fielding provides the framework, the, the box in which you can play, in which there's no such thing as no, you can't. Did that answer your question? Yeah, it did. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as we're coming up at the, the top of the hour here, I, I want to, I have one, maybe two last questions. But one, one question is, what's next? What's next? Um, I can give you a specific answer to that, but I can't give you a general answer. Uh, the answer is the same answer that I would have given you if you had asked me 20 years ago, what's next? I would have said, I don't know yet. Now I'm working on some projects, but in terms of what's next, I don't know yet. And can you talk a little bit about the, the projects that you're working on right now? Um, right now I'm working uh, on some education projects. Um, so we've developed, Africans are desperate for American education, but can't afford it. Um, so they settle for second best. I, a colleague of mine and I have developed a, 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 a management program that we'd like to attach to the African uh, 
uh, medical programs. So somebody who get in this country, uh, people will get an MD, MBA. There, we'd like them to get an MD with a management um, certificate attached from an American university. So we've developed the program. Now we've got to go implement it. So that's that's um, that's one piece. Um, and then I'm working on some kind of fun projects with other people. Um, I I'm doing uh, my friend Edie, the young man you saw in the one of the photographs wants to start a fish uh, processing company in Tanzania. So he called me and he said, can you help me? So I'll work with him to help him develop that. Um, uh, a, another student, a former student who is in Kinshasa, um, has uh, a nurse midwife friend who wants to um, uh, develop a nurse midwife project in the Congo. And I have some contacts. And so I will start exploring that. Um, and what else? You are you are one busy person. My goodness, I teach, I, I'm, te <laughs> I'm teaching four courses online in the in the, in the spring, um, and um, yeah, you are a true inspiration, and in uh, my role. Uh, in alumni relations, uh, conversations like this and sessions like this are just such an absolute joy. And you, you have, uh, this has been a fun project. We haven't done anything like this before where we did a, an art show and, you know, storytelling. And I really appreciate you doing this um, with me. And I want to thank everybody who's um, online today. I know there's quite a bit of family online. Uh, there was a question about this being recorded. It is being recorded. We'll send it to all of the attendees. And um, also what I'll put in the chat too is for those students and alums that are online, I just put in the website where you can see anything and everything fielding alumni related. And uh, we will have this video recorded or published and put on our YouTube page. Um, as well. So before we sign off, Jim, do you have any words of wisdom for 2021? Um, first, if anybody wants to go to Africa, let me know. Um, I take students, I take other people. I'll, if you want to go to Africa, I'll take you. Um, 2021, um, stay safe, um, explore, um, life's an adventure, go enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jim, thank you so much. This has just been an absolute pleasure. And yes. Yeah, thank, I thank everybody who came for coming um, and for listening and for watching. And I do appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Jim, I'll talk to you soon. You bet. Bye. Bye.